Today's review is sponsored by the new hit TV show, Are You Stronger Than a Fifth Grader? One full-grown adult versus his weight in fifth graders. Who will win this epic battle? Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Nightmare City. <laughs> Freddy Krueger had a street, Umberto Lenzi had a whole city. Umberto Lenzi is one of my favorite Italian directors. I love his Eurocrime movies, and I think that's where he excels, but his horror movies are also fantastic. When it comes to the most influential Italian horror directors, we usually talk about Mario Bava, Dario Argento, Lucio Fulci, but I think Umberto Lenzi is just as influential. This is the guy who created the cannibal genre in Italy with Man from Deep River. Without Umberto Lenzi, we would not have Cannibal Holocaust. No! You murderers! Murderers! Mario Bava and Dario Argento are usually seen as the big names in giallo cinema, and that's true. Mario Bava began the genre with uh, The Girl Who Knew Too Much and Blood in Black Lace, and Dario Argento started the giallo boom in the 70s with Bird with the Crystal Plumage. But before Bird with the Crystal Plumage, Umberto Lenzi had his hand in giallo movies when he made a few with Carol Baker. She had seen him killed. And yet now, he was close beside her, haunting her to the point of madness. And without movies like Nightmare City, we would not have movies like 28 Days Later. We'll get into that after the plot. The film takes place in an unknown European city, according to every synopsis on this movie. We follow a reporter named Dean Miller, played by Hugo Stiglitz. He has arrived at the airport with the intention of interviewing a well-known scientist. But that doesn't happen. The police and military have gathered at the airport due to an unknown plane that has been exposed to radiation landing at the airport. This is Commander Davidson of the Airport Security Police. You are surrounded in the name of the law. I order you to come out. The plane opens up and a group of bloodthirsty zombies comes rushing out and kills everybody. But these aren't your typical zombies. They run, they use weapons, and when they get a hold of some guns, they use them. <laughs> Eat your heart out, bub from Day of the Dead. Everyone at the airport is slaughtered except for Dean. As these very different zombies run amok throughout the city, killing people and spreading the infection, the government tries to keep this under wraps and under control. Dean gets his wife, and the two of them desperately try to escape the city as it's being overrun with running, weapons-using zombies or infected people. There's a debate amongst horror fans whether movies like this are zombie movies or infected people movies. And I really don't care. They're very similar to each other. They're two halves of the same coin. So I'm just going to call them zombies in this review. If you want to debate that, just keep in mind, I don't care. <laughs> Running zombies versus walking zombies. I don't know if this debate is still going on amongst zombie fans, but when 28 Days Later and the Dawn of the Dead remake came out, there was a debate amongst horror fans of running zombies versus walking zombies. How should they be? Get the tar on. I heard these two discussions a lot when those two movies came out. Zombies should not be able to run. They should only walk because they're reanimated, decaying corpses. It's okay if zombies run because that makes them more frightening. Everybody had their own reasoning for each argument. 
However, 28 Days Later and the Dawn of the Dead remake were not the first movies to have running zombies, despite what a lot of people were saying at the time. This is the first time anyone got the bright idea to make zombies ass-kickingly fast. In 1985, we had Return of the Living Dead. Those zombies ran, talked, and thought. I'm in this rush. Send more paramedics. And in 1983, Nightmare City, directed by Umberto Lenzi, was released here in America. It was released in Italy in 1980. So we would indeed not have 28 Days Later or the Dawn of the Dead remake without Nightmare City. I like movies like Nightmare City and Return of the Living Dead because they are a departure from the traditional Romero zombies. I like both kinds of zombies, but a common complaint of mine is the lack of variety in zombie movies. There are plenty Romero-style zombie movies I love, but I like when movies do something different. <laughs> What makes these zombies some of the most threatening in the genre is not only that they run, but they use weapons. Knives, clubs, guns. When I saw one of these zombies pick up a gun and start mowing people down, I had this big grin on my face. Teenage me thought this was awesome. Today, physically adult, not so much mentally adult me, still thinks it's awesome. <laughs> They do have some of the traditional zombie traits. They can only be killed by destroying the brain, they pass on the infection through a bite, but it's the running and the weapons that make them scary. The zombie designs are a little janky, but in a charming way. These zombies were exposed to radiation, and it suggested that that's what caused their zombie-ness. So, a lot of them are burned and have somewhat melting faces. But there are times where it kind of looks like they're turning into shit people. Ah! Literally shit-faced. Then we have the main character, Dean. He's a good main character, but he's not the most interesting. His face acting isn't the best. Throughout the movie, most of the time he just has the same look on his face. She said she wasn't feeling well today. She was going to stay home. I don't know, maybe she changed her mind. Okay, Liz. Okay. He's still a decent lead. We don't want to see him or his wife die, but his face acting could have been better. The movie doesn't really have a flowing narrative. It's mostly just going from zombie set piece to zombie set piece, but they're all entertaining set pieces. <laughs> One of my favorites is when the zombies invade the filming of a dance video. On two, hit it! A lot of 80s movies had a thing for leotards, either in exercising or making music videos. We saw women wearing leotards in Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter, Murder Rock, The Pit, killer workout. Leotards were big in the 80s, and 90% of the time, if someone was wearing a leotard in a horror movie, death was not far behind. No different here. These people are filming a music video, and then the zombies come in and start ripping everybody apart. And again, because these zombies run and use weapons, it makes the scene all the more chaotic. <laughs> Mayhem is always welcome in zombie movies. Mayhem creates entertainment in these kinds of flicks, and Nightmare City has plenty of mayhem. It's a very well-paced movie. There are some scenes with the military talking about the situation, and they feel right out of a 1950s B-movie. 
they seem kind of off. The dialogue in these scenes is a tad bloated and unnecessary. Here's how a guy explains that you need to shoot the zombies in the head. A machine may be indestructible, yet its functioning may still be blocked. Oh. By interrupting the feeding process, for example. Atomic contamination destroys the efficiency of red blood cells in very short order. However, the power still remains the brain. A lesion to the nerve centers can produce paralysis. The procedure stops the complex entirely. You mean that only bullets damaging the cranium can stop these, these monsters? That's a long way to go to say, hey, shoot them in the head. But these scenes don't go on for too long, and we don't have to wait long for the next zombie rampage. <laughs> The only other problem is the ending. I won't spoil it here, but it's one of those endings that makes you yell out loud, BULLSHIT! It doesn't ruin the movie, especially because of where they go with the ending, but I can't help but think that it would have been better if they ended the movie a little sooner or went in a different direction with the ending. For those of you who have seen Nightmare City, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Despite its few problems, this is a good zombie movie, and it's very unique to the genre. I love the fact that the zombies run and use weapons. I know there are some zombie purists out there that want zombies to be the traditional Romero zombies, but I think we need movies like Nightmare City to keep the genre fresh. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. The body count is way too high for me to count. We'll just say it's between one and a million. The kills consist of, but are not limited to, gunshots, stabbings, sucking blood from the neck, and blunt object beatings. There is a good amount of nudity in this flick, mostly breasts, some of which are not treated well. It reaches the zombie requirements with a spreading plague, ghouls biting necks, plenty of zombie mayhem, and zombies only being able to die through a bullet to the head. I like the fact that the zombies run and use weapons. It helps this movie stand out in the genre, and it set the stage for movies like 28 Days Later. The main character is a decent lead, but he needed better face acting. He mostly has the same expression throughout the film. The scenes with the military get a little overcomplicated with the dialogue. They could have gotten to the point better, but the pacing is still good. We don't have to wait long for the next zombie bloodbath. The ending could have been better as well, but again, the zombie scenes are so much fun and the pacing is so good that I think it evens everything out. I'm giving this a 3.9 out of 5. It's a unique zombie film that stands out in the genre, and it's a fun watch for Italian horror fans. As always, I want to thank everyone for watching and supporting my channel. Please leave a comment down below. Do you prefer walking zombies? Do you prefer running zombies? Or are you like me and think both have their place in the genre? This is The Maniac, here to remind you that the grindhouse will never die. Now I have one more important question to ask you. Do you wear leotards to the gym? If you do, your life may be in danger, especially during a zombie apocalypse.